Hey YouTube, happy Monday. I have about 20 minutes before I have to go into the doctor's office, so I want to get a um, quick Mad Men review in. And um, I just had to say that um, this episode was really um, good. I really liked it. It was really, um, I was really intrigued the whole way. It was very um, suspenseful, kind of, in a way. Anyway, let's uh, get to it. So, you know, at the end of the last episode, Stanley, <laughs> hey, I always mess this up. Stanley Cooper, Draper Price merged with, um, I guess, their CDC. I still get these names wrong, but um, yeah, the merger went into effect. There's a lot of employees that are like, okay, we're getting fired. Um, you know, so just a lot of hoopla going on. Um, and I think that might have been what made this episode exciting because there was an excitement of something new, I guess. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a Jump the Shark type thing, but um, I hear that Mad Men is going to end next season, so they probably already have a plan, so it probably won't be too much of a Jump the Shark. Anyway, oh, and by the way, so I'm going to be pretty wired. Anyway, <clears throat> the big developments, um, well... You know how I have been talking about the Ted guy from um, CDC or CD, CCD or SCD, whatever it is. And how he was kind of creepy and how I didn't really trust him. However, and this might just be good writing. Um, maybe this is what they want us to feel. But this last episode, I really liked him. Um, he does seem like a um, nice guy. <laughs> and um, very supportive and very um, humble. And just, um, just cool. Ugh, I hate when my phone does that. Anyway, the dynamics between this Ted guy, and I think his name is Ted, I'm not sure. But, um, the Ted guy and Don Draper were interesting because, you know, it really just showed... I think Don was a little insecure just in the way that the Ted guy interacts with his staff is more of a team player. He doesn't put himself on a on a separate level. And um you know, he's just a nice guy who like cares about people. And Don is probably just like, "Wow." I mean, there was um, a moment where they were in the meeting and Ted was really nice to one of the secretaries um and Don was kind of looking like, "Yeah, so what?" <laughs> Um, so I think there's a little bit of jealousy there. Um, all good. Um, and now, uh, now that I'm talking about it, it makes sense. Because if you think about what happened in the episode, um, Don probably felt a little powerless. Um, this Ted guy's coming in. You know, he's nice. People like him more. You know, already, even people at um, SCDP um, are liking him a little bit more than they like Don or appreciate him or respect him or whatever. It seemed like um, when he came into that meeting like 45 minutes late, it seems like there was like, oh, that's Don. Um, so what I'm saying is um, he probably felt a little bit like he was stripped of his big Don Draper powers. That's why he you know, had this power trip with the, um, lady that he's screwing. I don't know her name either, but they had this whole nine and a half weeks thing where he told her to go to a hotel and made her stay there and made her wear this dress and, you know, just, just, um, taking this power over her. And yeah, now that I think about it, it probably was because he felt a little, like a shot to his power, shot to his ego, um, with this Ted guy coming in and being nice, nice and likable and stuff like that. So that makes sense. I have to say the whole nine and a half week sex thing was interesting to me. I, I liked it. Um, I think it was a good dynamic and I, um, especially liked how it ended where she was like, no, let's go home. Um, and you know, he had to go home and he had this big, sad puppy dog face. Um, you know, I always talk about Don Draper and how I don't like him. And not that I, like, loved him on this episode. But, 
Yeah, he has this issue with home. He has this issue with, you know, it goes back to, I'm sorry, I, I suck at names, but the girl that he was messing with before he ended up um, getting engaged to Megan, when she said, you only like the beginnings of things, I think that's his deal. Like, he'll have, um, like with Betty and with Megan, it's this fairy tale of romance, you know, we're going to get married, she's beautiful, we're a couple, um, with Betty, you know, we're having children, so it's the idea of perfection until it gets hard, and then that's when he's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't cool anymore, I don't like this anymore, so I'm out of here. Um, so yeah, Don Draper is weird. I hope this lady isn't getting into this Mustang. I'm going to stop. Okay, good. She's not. So, um, I got to speed past this because I talk too much. And it's already kind of close for me to go into the appointment. A couple other things, though. Joan, um, who I love, um, she had some kind of issue. I forget. Something. She had a cyst on her ovary. And so she was having these issues, but, you know, with the merger and everything, everybody coming to her, she um, didn't feel right about, I guess, leaving. And the, you know, weird Bob Benson, who we don't quite know, we don't quite trust yet, he was really nice, and he, you know, took her to the hospital, and he got her into a hospital room sooner than she probably would have. And, you know, Joan's mom is already taken with Bob Benson. He's a cute guy. And I think that he would be cute with Joan. So, I like that dynamic. I kind of feel like that's... You know, they set him up this season as this kind of creepy, you know, we mysterious. We don't really know what's going on with him. And it would seem like a... What's the word I'm trying to... An easy out. Or, you know, it would just seem so easy if he was just introduced just to be with Joan. So I don't think it's that easy. But I do like the idea of them being together. And I like, you know, when they were going through who they were going to get rid of. That she sort of went to bat for him. I mean, the other partners didn't care at all, obviously. But... You know, there's there's something brewing there that, you know, there's something brewing there. So let's get back to Ted and Don because that was a thing that I was happy happened. Um, so, you know, Don comes into the meeting after banging his, his uh, jump off, his side piece. And uh, he comes into the meeting 45 minutes late. Everybody's giving him these eyes like, oh, Don, that's, that's typical Don. And Ted is kind of like disappointed in him. And so, but Don tries to, you know, make amends, and he goes into his office, offers him a drink. And it's funny, because Ted didn't seem like he wanted to take the drink, or that he was looking at him like, really, you guys drink? But then, that wasn't it. Anyway, um, ah, let's get through this, because I got like 10 minutes. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, you know, Ted gets blasted. He comes into the creative office, and he's blasted, and he just falls asleep. And Peggy's there, and she notices. And in my mind, I was like, talk to Don. You need to tell him that his behavior is not cool. Or, you know, you need to tell him that this is a good guy, and don't mess him up. And she basically did that. She was just going in, like, I was hoping that he would rub off on you and not the other way around. And... She said something. Oh, he said, um, well, he's a grown man. And she was like, so are you. And just walked out the office. So I like that um, Peggy isn't scared of Don Draper anymore. I mean, she, um, I mean, obviously, she's not under him anymore. And she hasn't been under him for, I guess, like a year. I don't really know how the time works on the show. But anyway, um, I think I got to go in now. But, um... That's my recap, and if I missed anything, it's because I'm rushing, you guys. Um, so, 
I guess I will see you guys next Monday. <laughs> I always stick out my tongue, too. Why do I do that? Okay, bye.